Utopia is a state of mind obtainable by all. At those times when all is running smooth and there are no bumps, hiccups, or gaps in your day, week, or possibly month, it is wonderful. It may work out, but then again, it may not. Others will then think, start thinking about it, and there you go, end of utopia. Because there will be two who think their way is best. Remember, everything happens in God's time. As long as you do not fight his way, things will continue to be smooth and nice. When you fight, it is when things get bumpy. Remember, God's time is not your time. Or is it blindness? To those on the outside, staying in one of these utopias can seem like a loss of self, a willingness to forgive the arrogant and despotic in return for protection from the real world. To continue chasing perfection looks like a refusal to engage in complexity, a labyrinth not of noble striving, but a path of least resistance. In our utopia, even as it is falling apart, the man decides to stay. I can't tell you what to believe, but as for him, he would seek God.
The journey is one of turmoil and transformation, as described by Mary Bowden. I am of humanity. I have reason, logic, and temperance. I put aside prejudices. I revel in my uniqueness. I have boundless love for all. I will band with others of like spirit and create a new Eden. We will live and work in harmony for the good of all, transcendence. Our future is bright. We sustain this perfect flower which history claims too temporal to survive the world. We are proud. We are happy. We are fools. We cannot transcend our inborn nature. It is sown within us and we cannot break the threads. Strife has entered the gates. We thought we had so carefully closed. We're wounded. We have failed. I am despair. I return inward unto myself and slumber. The metamorphosis begins anew. I become the fetus, and like the phoenix, I will awaken, rise from my ashes, stand tall against the odds, act, and hope. Oh, 
the legacy of utopia? What should we take away from our past? The harmonists were a source of peace and prosperity in this state and were important in establishing Indiana as a trading hub of the frontier. The value they placed on education, pacifism, and women's rights also helped shape Indiana's culture. And although the Owenite community in New Harmony lasted very briefly, Many of the people who were involved in it remained in Indiana and had a tremendous impact on the state. The scientists and educators that Owen brought to the area stayed and made our state a hub of scientific progress. Owen's children went on to be politicians who passed landmark legislation on women's rights and almost single-handedly set up Indiana's public school system. It's more different, difficult to see a positive legacy from Jim Jones and the People's Temple, but some of its survivors remain committed to progress. As one survivor said, any utopian illusions I had were shattered. A utopian community killed our children. But how do you temper that so as not to give up on that idealism, not to give up on that dream? Surviving is about living in the present with that hope. Even Jim Jones' son has said, I truly believe, and I still believe, that you can change the world. You can take passion, effort, desire, and carve out a better place. If I didn't believe that, why get up in the morning? What's different now from then is that I know it has to start with me. It's interesting to note that all three of the utopias occurred during times of social unrest. Religious strife, the Industrial Revolution, and the Civil Rights Movement were fertile ground for dreaming big. We might ask, is utopia inevitable during turbulent times? Are utopias necessary? Do they raise the bar? spurring us to be better by aiming for perfection? Or do they distract from efforts that can actually produce change? Are utopian experiments foolish or admirable? Are utopias always doomed to fail? Or should we keep trying? In the words of Pam Rader, and now anew it must begin to deliver followers from sin. Out of the rotting deed must come another creed to discover a different place that can deliver the human race from the answer that lies within that we are the originators of sin. For every plan we have to escape only replays the same old tape, which we seem doomed to repeat as we march to the same beat. It is, of course, within us all why from paradise we did fall. That from which we seek to deliver is an arrow in our own quiver. If we can learn to get along and to the circle of life belong, there is a chance we could find the peace we seek within our mind. We may not know until hindsight kicks in, but it certainly feels like we've entered another time of social unrest in this country. Our society is divided by fault lines of race, gender, class, religion, language, and political party. All sides of the debate feel that their values are under threat. We're on the cusp of choosing new leaders, but it's difficult to know what makes a leader trustworthy. When is idealism dangerous? And when is pragmatism cowardly? I cannot tell you what to believe, nor do I know what lies at the end of our community's labyrinth. But our utopian past is here to inspire 
and to warn us. Our past challenges us to ask, why do we suffer? Where is our hope? These same questions which plagued the People's Temple, the Owenites, the Harmonists, even Job and his friends, they're just as challenging today. So for now, dear audience, I encourage you to think, to wonder, and to live in the present with your hope. Oh. 